after my first 24 hour shift, I described it as me participating in an extreme sport that people don't talk about. So Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joy. I'm a neonatal nurse practitioner living here in Houston. I make content about nursing, living here in Houston, and how to achieve your goals. If that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and push that subscribe button and let's get into the content. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys an update on me being a nurse practitioner. It has officially been seven months and so I'm going to give you my seven month update and then I'm also going to talk to you about how to survive 24 hour shifts because baby it's been a time okay so as a neonatal nurse practitioner i work seven 24 hour shifts a month which sounds pretty great right i only work seven days a month and they are 24 hour shifts as a bedside nurse nicu nurse i work 12 hour shifts so i have worked 12 hour day shifts 12 hour night shifts and 12 hours as a weekend option nurse which means that i worked only weekends only saturday and sunday but i made the same amount of money like i worked full time so i've officially worked all the shifts and now i'm working 24 hour shifts and it has been an adjustment for real working 24 hour shifts definitely takes some time getting used to like after my first 24 hour shift i described it as me participating in an extreme sport that people don't talk about like i literally felt like i had been in an extreme sport imagine like getting phone calls all day being overstimulated all day and then 12 your 12 hours are done but instead of you going home you're still staying there and the calls keep coming and then eventually when you do get a chance to lay down, imagine the lights flicking on, imagine a phone call ringing, imagine a loud noise, like a bang in the hallway, like then you gotta jump up, there's an emergency. It's constant, it's crazy. People don't talk about it and I feel like it needs to be talked about. Like it's crazy to do 24 hour shifts. But again, pretty nice because you only work seven days a month. So. There's always a trade-off. At my particular hospital, nurse practitioners can work 24 hour shifts, 48 hour shifts, 72 hour shifts. Me personally, I cannot imagine staying at the hospital more than 24 hour shifts. Yes, we have a call room, but do you get to sleep like you sleep at home in your own bed? No. And I, I'm saying this because I am a new nurse practitioner, but then I've also talked to experienced nurse practitioners and they do say like, yes, they sleep better than I do, but you still don't sleep as good as you would sleep if you were at home even if you got no phone calls all night long so if you work you know 48s and 72s heads off to you but me personally i'm always going to be a 24-hour girl because i require a lot of sleep like i'm a sleep be person like i'm a sleepy girl i require a lot of sleep so 24 hours is all i could ever do and obviously because i'm new 24 hour shifts is the only shift i can do i can't even do 48s and 72s until i can prove that i'm capable of doing 24 hour shifts which is fine with me but imagine like doing a 48 or a 72 hour shift and then you have a sick kid on day one and you're up all night at the bedside day one but you're still at work and you still have to stay at work for another two days before you get to go home and your kid is going to be sick all three days so imagine no sleep for three days anyway that's enough of me ranting about that you all got my spiel on 24 hour shifts so let's talk about the fact that i have officially made it working as a nurse practitioner i'm very proud of myself because when i tell you like when i first started i was so scared and so unsure of myself but i can feel the confidence coming i can feel the light bulb coming on and i can feel myself you know feeling more at ease at my job once the neo goes home so growth y'all uh, definitely growth i am officially two months off orientation so there's been some time there's been some time since my last update i've officially been doing 24 hour shifts for three months now and i will tell you like no i don't think you ever feel like you're ready to come off orientation i don't know if i would have ever felt like it i probably would have stayed on orientation for two years if they let me but what i will say is all of my preceptors have been really really nice to me they've all let me keep their telephone numbers and told me no matter what time it is i can reach out to them and ask them questions if i have questions which helps me so much because if it's a small thing i don't want to call the doctor at home i mean obviously i can 
But if it's like a small nursing thing, I don't want to call them for that. So it's very nice to be able to have my preceptors telephone numbers. And I really do appreciate the love that they've given me because I need it. But for the most part, what I really try to do is focus on using my resources, focus on trying to look things up. And then if I just really have a question that I just really need to have answered, then I'll reach out to my preceptors. Or if I'm just really unsure about maybe possibly admitting a baby, or is there any other things I can do before admitting a baby, then I will reach out, send a text to um, my preceptors group chat, and then, you know, somebody responds back to me. So it's really nice to be able to have that. If you are a new nurse practitioner, try to make some type of connection with practitioner with experience because having that resource, being able to reach out to people has been so very helpful to me. And you really do need that. You really do need that when you're on your own in the beginning. I will tell you, it is a very rewarding position to be in when you find yourself managing all the babies by yourself the meal has gone home for the day and it's you you are the person who is managing the babies I do love that but I will tell you it's very scary as well my first month on my own um, I had a very very sick admission I had a code and then I also intubated a baby for the first time by myself like the meal was not there so you know you do so much like in my first month i had so much done you know um so it allowed me to grow a lot but it is still very scary but like i said it's very rewarding that you're able to do it like you're able to manage it on your own just important things to remember is that you set the tone so you must remain calm at all times even when it's scary for you you have to remain calm on the outside because if you are panicking, everybody around you will panic. I mean, you're managing the tone of the unit. And then number two, give yourself grace. Like if you don't know something, don't feel so bad about knowing it. Just know what you don't know and know when to ask for help. Like when I got that very sick admission, I knew the kid was sick. I did not know exactly what was wrong, but I did know the baby was sick. And I did know that I didn't know exactly what was wrong. And I did know that I needed to reach out to the Neo and ask for guidance. So these are important things to remember. We're not superhuman. We won't know everything. We're not a computer. We're not AI. Okay. So just know what you don't know. Remain calm give yourself grace and ask for help when you need help that's it i feel like if you do those things then you can be successful i mean obviously it's still very new for me but that's what i've been doing and that's what's been helping me build my confidence when managing the unit by myself and try to remain positive y'all try to remain positive because i'm trying to tell you like sometimes things get a little hard one time i found myself even looking for a different job I mean, out of nursing altogether. So <laughs> try to remain positive about your experience because growth is hard. Like if you're not experiencing pain if you're not scared, if you're not going through anything, you're not growing. Growth is hard. So try to remain positive about it. Um, you're going to need that for those days when you have really hardships and you want to look for another job. The being positive is going to get you through that. Okay. So for me, I wake up at 6 a.m. To get ready for work i have to be at work at 8 a.m everybody knows that houston's traffic is trash it's terrible so i get up at six i get ready for work and i have to be at work by 8 a.m so i try to leave around 6 40 no later than 6 40 okay because i have to give myself at least an hour to get to work and then i need that little grace period in case there's some stupid stuff going on on the street and there's always something stupid going on on the street I leave the house around 640 and then I get to work at 8 a.m. And we are a salary, so we don't clock in and out. But I go in and the first thing that I do is get sign out from the nurse practitioner who was there before me. Sign out usually takes around 30 to 40 minutes, could take longer depending on how many babies we have. I work in a level three facility. It is a 25 bed unit. Um, the least I've had is five babies and then the most I've had is 20. So you can have anywhere from, you know, 
zero to 25 babies on your own. So that'll determine how long sign out will take, how many babies we have. Sign out entails the nurse practitioner that's been there telling me about each baby, what's going on with them, what is the plan that we have so far, and anything like in particular I need to know, socialize, that kind of thing. And we go over each and each baby that way. After sign out, I walk up to the unit to say good morning to the nurses so that they can know that it's me, that I'm the one that's there. So I speak to all the nurses and then I try to look at my sickest kids, like anybody who's intubated, anybody who's been having trouble, anybody who I don't know. Like if I've been off for some days and I haven't seen that baby ever before, then I try to go look at all those kids first and really my assessments really just is determined by the fact of if I have a lot of babies on TPN or not because we handwrite our TPNs and so if I have babies on TPN I need to get that TPN done as soon as possible the pharmacists like to have it faxed to them by 12 o'clock and so that's like one of the first things that I like to work on and then I'll sit down and go through labs and go through each baby and make a plan for each baby the Neo usually comes in around 1030 and that's when we like pre-ground. So we'll talk about any babies that are sick or any baby that I have concern about, any babies that I want to do certain things on. We'll discuss those type of things and um, I'll let them know my plan. They'll let me know what they think about the plan and then we'll get ready to go out and round with the nurses. So we round with the nurses. I use a computer so I can put in orders while we're rounding. The nurse presents at my unit. We do nurse list around so the nurse presents the babies at a, another unit that I worked at they do um, nurse practitioner lay around so the nurse practitioner presents the baby it could go either way at my unit the nurse presents the babies which is fine so the nurse presents the babies then I just kind of go over the plan what we're going to do for the day and then of course if the parents are at the bedside then I sum up what we talked about and let them know what the plan is going to be and we all do that together the nurse me the neo we're all together with the charge nurse and so everybody is on the same page everybody know what the plan is for the day once rounds is finished that's when we usually go to lunch so we have a physician lounge and there's a chef and they make a different meal every day so that's pretty nice you can go down to the physician lounge they have home cooked food they have pre-packaged food ice cream coffee sodas whatever they have like a whole bunch of stuff so you can go down there and eat down there and we can eat for free there in the physician lounge or we can eat for free in the cafeteria so that's a nice perk of being a nurse practitioner so i go down there i grab my lunch we usually walk down there together uh, me and the neo so we'll go down there grab our lunch but then i usually head back up to my office because like i said before i can have anywhere from five notes to 25 notes and so i want to get these notes done because there could be a baby born and that, that's an emission note or there could be a delivery I need to go to and that's a delivery note. I could have a really sick kid and then get set behind. It could take hours before I get back to writing my notes. So it could be a lot of factors that could have me writing notes until midnight and I don't want to do that. So I like to get right back up to the office and start writing my notes, try to get those done as soon as possible. If I'm having a really tough day, like if I'm having emissions, having discharges, having procedures, having things going on, and I'm getting exhausted doing my notes, I can feel that, then I can go downstairs to the physician lounge, get some coffee. I usually like, try to drink a lot of water, um, anything that I could do to like keep my energy up because this is not going to be an eight hour shift like this is not going to be a 12 hour shift this is a 24 hour shift so i have to keep my energy up and that's usually what i do i also try to get a lot of snacks like fruit cups vegetable cups that kind of thing to put in the refrigerator because i'm going to be there overnight and so if I get hungry, I want to have things to snack on. So that's around the time where I go downstairs and get extra snacks as well. And I try to get healthy snacks because when you're working 24 hour shift, you can really jack your body up. I don't want to gain weight working 24 hour shifts. I don't want to have sh these, you know, these problems. I, I, I don't want to get big. So I really try hard to be mindful of what I'm putting in my body while I'm at work. Make sure I get healthy snacks and healthy snacks for later so that I'm not like snacking on chips because when I'm telling you I'm a stress eater so if I'm tired and I you know been up all night I'm managing these patients I will want to snack on chips I will not want to snack on celery I don't even give myself the option like I don't even bring chips up there with me because I know I will eat chips 
you just have to be mindful about what you bring to work so if it's a good day and i finish my notes around 5 or 6 p.m i'm in my call room that's where i'm doing my notes so i'll go ahead and start setting up for the night that's when i'll take out my warming blanket because i'm a cold body i be needing the heat so i have a warming jacket you guys have already seen that i have a warming blanket so yeah i'm a cold person so i take out my warming blanket set up my bed housekeeping has already made up the bed for me so there's fresh sheets and things on the bed but i just like to have my blanket and i bring my own pillow from home so i set that up then i'll go ahead and get all of my toiletries out i have toothbrush i have um you know hair products i'll have my moisturizers i'll go ahead and set all that stuff up too because i'm going to get ready to take a shower every day before work i always pack my suitcase i always bring an extra pair of scrubs a t-shirt i have a nicu t-shirt that i wear it says nicu nurse practitioner my friend danielle got me that shirt for graduation and i literally wear it every day so shout out to my friend but i i wear the nicu nurse practitioner t-shirt and then i wear scrub pants and then i have my my uh scrub jacket in case i need to like leave out my call room in a hurry i have tried to sleep in the scrub top and it's pretty hard to do like i cannot get comfortable and so therefore i sleep in my t-shirt and then if i need to leave out my call room i just put on my scrub jacket i could just zip that up if i need to go talk to a parent or anything like that i bring my dance goes because i like to be able to just slide my feet into my shoes if there's an emergency i don't want to jump out of bed having to tie my tennis shoes or anything like that i just want to be able to slide my feet right into my dance goes i bring a second pair of socks t-shirt bra that kind of thing because i'm going to be taking a shower like I have had to stay at work and not take a shower before, which was horrible because literally the next day there was twins. So twins came and I had to do procedures like put in umbilical lines and things like that. And so I'm already disgusting because I didn't take a shower last night and now I'm like in sterile drapes and I'm sweating and i'm doing this for see it was just bad it was a bad look so after that like i try really hard to freshen up at night just in case because you never know what's gonna happen i try to take my shower around 6 37 o'clock while the nurses are doing shift change we have a shower in our call room which is pretty nice so i'll go in there i'll take a shower and when i say shower this it's very light listen the shower is like three minutes long if that it's so fast like i'm literally just hitting the hot spots real quick because anything can happen if there's an emergency if a baby extubates themselves if a baby comes in through the er like anything can happen baby can bo be born anywhere in the hospital like i'm expected to be there and i'm expected to be there pretty quickly and so that's like my anxiety i'm always thinking like oh my god i'm naked and then i get a phone call i get a page i hear the code button anything i need to be able to get to them so it's going to take me time to put my clothes on and stuff like that so when i say shower i'm talking about like a really quick fast freshen up shower that's what i do and then i go ahead and get dressed in my new scrubs and i just feel so much better and so clean after i do that and then obviously of course i'm going to put on my stress relief lotion because i need no stress something i forgot to tell you guys is that every morning before i even start my shift before i even get in that car i always say a prayer i say a prayer for myself i say a prayer for my babies and i say a prayer for the neo the nurses anybody i'm going to be working with for the day because i need god with me <laughs> i need god with me every single day that i go to work and the prayer that i say for myself is that i have the knowledge to save the baby whatever the baby needs i have the knowledge to save the baby and if i don't have the knowledge to save the baby i have the knowledge to understand that i need to ask for help that is the prayer that I say for myself and I say this every single day when I'm walking throughout the unit and I'm saying good morning to everybody I'm quietly asking God to put his protection over the babies for the day and I'm praying over all the babies as I'm walking through I am praying because i need god to be with me the entire day i'm at work after i've taken my shower i may have some downtime depending on what's going on in the unit so like from 7 to 9 30 nothing may be going on and so i'll have downtime at this time i like to read or i have like these um, education modules that i can do for free like my company provides those to get continuing education so i do those um just something you know 
to keep me occupied until around 9 30 10 o'clock is when i like to do night rounds i try to wait until the nurses have already done their nine o'clock baby so they've done their eight o'clock baby now they're doing their nine o'clock baby i try to wait till like 9 30 where they're out of the room and they already done their nine o'clock baby in case they have any questions they've already seen their baby and they're not in the room while I'm trying to round with them. So with night rounds, I'll go out and find the charge nurse. The charge nurse rounds with me and we go to each nurse and then the nurse presents their baby and they talk about any medications or any concerns or, you know, anything that's going on with their baby that they need to know about because they are night shift. So they wasn't here during the day. They didn't hear the plan. Of course, they got it when they did sign out, but they're going to talk to me about any questions that they have and i'm going to clarify for the night and give them a plan so like okay this baby just you know went to room air today so if they start acting up it's okay to go ahead and put back on the nasal cannula just give me a call and we'll go that'll be the plan like give me a call I'll come look at the baby and we'll put them back on the nasal cannula that way they have a plan in their head and they kind of know what to expect throughout the night and they're able to manage things as they come up the charge nurse is there so she's able to help manage things as they come up i uh, will go around and we'll talk to each nurse about every single baby and then night rounds usually last around an hour hour and a half and then i'll go back to my call room at this point i'll try to like eat a little bit if i have dinner or if i have my little healthy snack i'll go ahead and eat that it's okay to drink coffee but i try to just take a nap i try to go to sleep because i don't know what's going to happen so if nothing is happening at this point i want to try to get some sleep just in case around 3 a.m i get an admission or 3 a.m i get a sick kid anything like that is happening then i'll have to be up at 3 a.m so i try to just get a little bit of rest at this point so i'll eat i'll drink my water i bring my big water cup um, that i showed you guys when i did this video about what's in my bag so i'll bring that and then i'll just try to like finish that water up and go ahead and eat any snacks that i have and then I'll try to go to sleep obviously I call and check on my daughter and check on my man and all that kind of stuff too by 10 30 11 o'clock I'm trying to wind down I'm trying to go to sleep because I don't know what's going to happen some nights can be really good I may now get a phone call all night so I may sleep from 11 o'clock until 6 a.m 6 a.m is the time that I set my alarm to get up because we have to get up to get the numbers of what the baby took in the 24 hour period and then we have to write everything out so when we get ready to do sign out i'm able to tell the new nurse practitioner about any labs or you know anything that happened overnight so 6 a.m is when i set my alarm to get up so if nothing is going on then i won't get a phone call from 11 until 6 which is really nice i mean it's only happened twice but when it happens, it's very nice. Other than that, the nurses know that they can call me at any time. I'm also responsible for any babies that are well babies. So if they call me about any blood sugars or if they call me about any billy levels, anything like that, then I need to go assess those babies, determine on if they need to be admitted or not. So I can get phone calls from well babies and then I can get phone calls from the NICU nurses that I'm responsible for as well. So I can get phone calls all throughout the night i'm a light sleeper so i always wake up and hear them but it's still very scary because it's like what if i miss a phone call what if i miss a phone call i'm still like there i'm still scared to miss a phone call but i'm a very light sleeper so i feel like i'll be okay with that at 6 a.m i go ahead and wake up that's usually when all my gases like if i order gases on any babies those gases will start to come through if i order any x-rays those x-rays will start to pop up so i'll be looking at all those labs you know any bmps or cbc's anything that i order they usually start to come through around 6 6 30 so i'm looking at those and then i'm writing down the intake and output all the babies had in the 24 hours that i was there and then i'm getting the paperwork ready for the next nurse practitioner if anything happened overnight like i had to admit a baby or you know anybody's gases were bad anything crazy then i go ahead and call the neo and update the neo let them know what's going on so that they know you know for their day like what to expect but if nothing really happened then i don't have to call the neo to tell them like nothing happened they just want the phone call letting them know if something did happen so i'll go ahead and call the neo we'll talk about anything that i need to do any changes i need to make and then i'll go ahead and get ready to go so i'll pack up my heating blanket pack up all my toiletries you know might take my bonnet off all those kind of things 
ladies and go out and talk to the night shift nurses before they leave now they work seven to seven so i get out there before they start to do shift report just to make sure that they didn't have any problems overnight that i didn't hear about so I talk to every single nurse, make sure everybody's good, make sure all the babies are good before they go home. And then I'll go ahead and pack up my stuff and get ready to go and give sign out to the next nurse practitioner. So the next nurse practitioner will come around 8 a.m. and then I'll give them sign out and I'll head home. So I'll get in my car and go ahead and go home. Now, depending on if it's a weekday or a weekend, that depends on how fast I get home. But, you know, it takes an hour to get home. Once I get home, depending on what type of night I had, that will determine on if I'll go to sleep immediately or if I'll stay up for a little bit and like work on YouTube or anything like that. So once I do fall asleep, though, y'all, I'm asleep. And I'm usually asleep from to like 3 p.m. or 5 p.m., depending on how bad the night was. If it was a bad night, I'm sleeping till 5. If it was a good night, I'm sleeping till 3. I do set my alarm so I can get up because I don't want to be asleep all day and then... I can't go to sleep at night. So now my schedule is messed up. So I set my alarm to get up either at three or either at five. And I don't really plan to do anything like that day. The day I'm off after 24, I'm kind of just at home relaxing. I don't make any plans to go anywhere because like I said before, doing 24 hour shifts, you really have to adjust. Like you really have to get used to it. It's rough on the body. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And I'm so happy to give you guys this update on how things are going as a new neonatal nurse practitioner. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about becoming a neonatal nurse practitioner or anything about you know working 24 hour shifts and if you like this video please 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 subscribe and share this video with anybody who's in nursing school or interested in being a nurse practitioner and i will see you guys next time bye